Hello and welcome back. This is another painting in the stay home and paint, stay safe and paint series. Um, we are in lockdown here in the United States and I'm kind of enjoying myself because I get to be with my family and I get to make art and watch movies and read books and those are kind of the things I love to do. Certainly I'm missing my friends, but guys, when you can be creative and be surrounded by loved ones, there's not much you're missing. So with this painting tonight, I wanted you to enjoy something uh, with me, and that is the beautiful and amazing textures that you can create with this particular group of settings that I have in the top right corner of the screen. The oil brush is very versatile with even just default settings, but these particular settings on the oil brush give the paint a very, um, a lot of the same presence and kind of texture that I love about oil painting. Now I've painted in Italy and drawn in Italy and came back to the studio and sketched and drawn and painted from my photos from Italy and I love painting Italy. I love going to Italy. It's probably, other than home, it's probably my favorite place in the world. So. I wouldn't have tackled this painting in Art Rage if I wasn't confident I could get the feeling I wanted. And that feeling is that um, textural, meaty, chunky, um, kind of John Singer Sargent landscape sort of feeling. Uh, we're using a lot of bold brushwork and um, a lot of energy in the mark. And I feel like I can get that in Art Rage and I can get that and still have the control I need to be able to say the things I want to say in the way I want to say them. Um, right now in the painting, I am doing what I call the blocking. So I'm just blocking in all the local color and trying to establish some of the big movements between lights, darks, and midtones. Trying to find my warm and cool colors. Trying to establish um, just kind of how this is going to feel. Now, um, please use the settings that I'm showing you. Play with it. Um, also, I'm using the palette knife for some variation because I think I, if you paint kind of with the, the whole painting with one brush, it, it starts to feel a little redundant. And I'm also going in and using the palette knife to do some of my least favorite part of this painting, which is um, in Italy, uh, all across Italy, you'll see these beautiful historic buildings. And they have so many tiny windows. And I don't like painting tiny windows <laughs> and all of that detail. Um, I'm usually more interested in the big ideas, um, but one of the things you kind of have to figure out how to do is capture that, uh, all those little little specks and dots and flicks of the brush to kind of capture those openings in the windows or openings in the doors and all that, all of that architectural detail because it is such a big part of that architecture and that feeling, and it would just not read right if you didn't if you ignored it. But here, um, I'm kind of grunting through that part of it, um, even though that's not my favorite part. Um, I expand the canvas here, and that's really easy to do. You can always resize your canvas at any point. You can resize the resolution, or you can resize the um, actual proportions and add you know, square inches to your canvas if you decide you want to do something else. And that's what I did here. I wanted to go for something a little bit bigger and a little bit more bold. Um, as you can see, the texture on the canvas, the actual simulated canvas itself, um, is interacting with the paint in a really cool way. It's giving the, the painting a lot of that um, real three-dimensional presence. And then the brushwork is, is really nice. And so the first pass, you can lay down some brushwork. You'll still get some of the tooth and the bristle and the 3D body of the paint. But as you lay on top of that with even more brush strokes, it'll start to amass really quickly. So it's awesome. Um, you just do need to be careful that you don't go too hard, otherwise you're gonna get really chunky, messy looking, almost distracting levels of detail or of uh, three-dimensional texture. So you gotta be careful there. Another thing to, to think about is um, when doing architecture of this sort, you can hold the control key and drag your brush across the surface and that'll give you straight lines. Sometimes, depending on what tablet you're using, it's hard to get a straight line or the right kind of angle on the mark if you're using a really small tablet. Um, and using that control key to just get a nice straight line once in a while helps anchor the design and give it a little of that sturdiness. Another thing you can do up at the top of the screen, and I'll probably use this at the very end of the painting, 
you can turn the grid on and off. And sometimes painting digitally is also difficult because we might be painting uh, a painting in our lap on, on the couch or, you know, sitting with family in the living room and we're not maybe, maybe looking directly at the screen. Um, there are all kinds of things that can happen to, to get your painting to have a little bit of a skew or a tilt to the angular perspective that you, you're working with. And so um, using the grid can help you kind of align that even if you can't get a square look at your screen while you're painting. Um, this painting is made of thousands of little brushstrokes. Uh, I wish I could, you know, hold to the simple and just keep it keep it really, really bold and simple, but I think it would be um, a disservice to the to this subject to treat it like that. Um, overall, this painting, I think, uh, I timed it. It took me about an hour and a half to paint, maybe. Um, and so, you know, digital is fast, and, and to go fast, you don't have to work sloppy. You know, you can still add, add in the, the necessary detail to make it um, beautiful and um, not that, that that simple isn't beautiful but I think in this case it needs some of that texture and layers and um, a lot of overlapping of layers and textures and color and and uh, to, to create that illusion of space and depth so there's just a lot of kind of picking away through these little angles and and uh, of architecture and, and little nooks and crannies and there's a lot of things that I'm ignoring a ton of things that I'm ignoring and I think it has to be that way though because um, you know you want to get just enough that's the goal is just to capture just enough of it so that uh, it's there but you're not you're not elaborating too much and you're not overstating anything too much and that's the delicate dance you have to have as an artist is what is the minimal amount of communication I can I can provide to, to communicate what I'm trying to say um, and not go too too much into it and kill the painting with detail. Um, here again, even though the lighting is is very faint and it's just that last light of the day, the very final moment of light of the day, I am still painting the light. And so um, I'm not really painting architecture as much as I'm painting light. I'm light, painting light falling on architecture. And so that hopefully that focus will guide your decision making when you're trying to decide how much to include or how much to omit um, and I think um, something that helped me and it was just a, a strategy for this painting because I found that I was having to do a little bit too much work in all these small spaces I I took kind of a, a dark grayed out sepia color and I used the paint bucket tool and poured it into the background and that allowed for any place that I don't have pigment and if I if I'm brushing over an area with my oil brush and I leave a little spot open, that cavity or vacancy is going to read as that background color. And, and that background dark kind of sepia color is going to be an, a more fulfilling sort of um, solution to that negative space than white, especially with the time of day here. I don't usually paint with um, kind of a toned ground or background or a toned canvas, um, but in this case I think it was a good choice for simplifying my process a little bit. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out about this painting is that as much as I love the oil brush settings that I created for this for this painting, there are times where you need to use a palette knife or you need to use, in my opinion, you need to use like uh, some of the custom brushes that are, are, are presets with the software just to give a little more variety. Um, I really think that as you're painting you want to create um, many many surprises for the eye and the eye is insanely uh, sensitive you know far more than I think we're even aware of and I think if if I give the viewer if I give myself something more to look at than um, in every way then I think that helps. I think it helps to use different brushes, different brush strokes, different brush widths, different um, pressures, all kinds of ways of, of creating variety within the harmony of the brushwork. And I think that that's really important because um, what we're doing is is to delight the eye, right? And uh, just like a, a great song delights our, our, our ears, but also our heart, I think a great um, image, a beautiful painting, is something that 
um, is a delight for our eye, but also for our heart. And I, so I think we need to use every tool we can to surprise and, and enchant the viewer. And I, I, so the, the brushes and the tools and, and the ways that we use those, is, that's very important. Um, one of the things also is, uh, you know, don't be afraid to redraw. I, I constantly, you know, I'll put stuff down and then just feel like, oh, you know, I, that's okay, but I, I want to change it. Or that's okay, but I want to change it. And um, one other thing that I like to do, and it's, it's one thing I didn't do with this painting yet, is I like to paint it. And before I share it out, I like to, to have a day with it, you know, sleep on it one day and come back the next day. And once I do that, oftentimes I'll run into a bunch of little problems that, um, that I have to be careful of. So um, I think so far so good, though. Um, here in the water, um, you have to make sure you capture some of the reflections from the buildings. But in this case, the way the light is bouncing, don't overstate it. Um, I, I don't think you need to worry about how to quote unquote paint water. All you need to do is paint the values and textures as they are. And um, you know, the, the brain is wildly powerful at interpreting and connecting dots. So just kind of get enough in there. Um, if you do want to get in and, and delight yourself by painting thousands of little ripples and uh, you know, go for it. But to me, I don't think you need very much for it to read like water. Um, and, and the point really isn't that it's water or masonry or uh, brickwork or, um, or, or, or sky or, or whatever. The point is that it's, it's, it's the shapes of light and dark. And um, here I, I wanted to point out that um, as I kind of get to the end, um, I want to distress and kind of beat up a little bit what I put down so I can create a little bit more variety. Uh, again of that different brush stroking and I'm trying to create more layer more depth more nuance um, more texture throw the grid on and make sure my my proportions and perspective are good um, you know you have you have tools in digital that you may not have in traditional and you want to use those and um, you know it's, it's great to do that um, another thing I want to do is even though I you know the, the color picker tool which I use for this painting to kind of speed things along is a great tool it doesn't really get everything just right it, it's good but it's it's not perfect and a lot of times what I'll notice is just like when we do our real paintings and our real mixing on the palette is that we our colors kind of migrate towards the towards the middle a little bit toward the midtones and so in this case I'm gonna drop in um, a new layer at the very end and set that layer to its blend mode I'm gonna set to soft light and then when I when, I'm, when I've got that set up, I'm going to just paint some warm highlights and some cool shadows into it just a little bit to push that just a little bit. And it can tone that up or down by changing the opacity of the layer just to give it a little bit of pop. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this painting. I hope you're staying home safe and sound. I hope you're painting and doing something creative with your quarantine time. Uh, enjoy you guys. Outrage is a great tool for this kind of work and it really surprised me how all this came out. Thank you so much for watching. If you want, uh, check out my Patreon, check out my Instagram, check out my YouTube. Uh, 